Today, I'm gonna to show you some awesome ways you can use Gaussian splatting in Blender and in Unreal Engine 5. I'm also gonna show you how we can fly through these Gaussian splats FPV drone style using a gamepad controller. I talked about setting this up in my last video if you want the full guide on that. So why Gaussian splats? Well, there's a lot that you can do with them. 3D scan technology is progressing at a rapid pace and it's super easy to start making these with just your phone camera. Recently, I even saw news that the creator of Pixar invested in this AI Gaussian splatting startup and yeah, the results just look insane. So expect a lot more Gaussian splatting tech to pop up on the radar very soon. Now on the flip side, the advantage of taking these scans into 3D softwares allows you to use things like geometry nodes in Blender or Niagara particle effects in Unreal Engine to create some really mind-bending visual effects. So let's show you how to do it. We're gonna start with in Blender, which is where we'll be creating our FPV drone animations. And then I'll show you how to port those animations to other software like Unreal Engine 5. So what I did is I just hopped into Skyrim, Counter-Strike, just a couple of games. It doesn't have to be a game. You can walk outside, record with your phone. That requires touching grass, so I opted just to sit in my chair and do it in Skyrim. Either way, once you have your recording, ideally you want a 360 camera view of whatever you're trying to splat. You want to go into the description and download this. This is Jawset Post Shots and it'll allow you to create Gaussian splats. For this method, I followed a tutorial by CG Matter, which is an excellent tutorial. He talks about the math behind how the Gaussian splats work and just how to set it up and do a bunch of things. So I will link that below as well. Highly recommend you watch it. Essentially, you take your footage, which is here's what I recorded in Skyrim, me just using the free camera just to rotate around the city of Whiterun, and you just drag it in. You see we have 3,700 images here. That's overkill. I kept it around 150, and I thought my results were pretty good. That's about the only thing that I changed. You can just click here to import and you see down here in the bottom right, it is going to train your model and you will see everything start to come into focus. So it takes about 25 minutes, which is really not that bad. You see, these are the camera references that it's using. This is just from me rotating around in my 3D scene. And you can see the quality is really, really good. And that's what's really cool about 3D scan technology. It's getting a lot better. How can we take this and fly our FPV drone around in it? So what you want to do is first export this. So file, export it as a splat model, and it'll export as a normal PLY file. So now we can come back over to Blender and you want to download another plugin, the Blender 3D Gaussian splatting plugin. So again, link will be down below. Just click import and select that PLY file. So here's the PLY. Let's turn it on so you can actually see the textures. So here's what it looks like. Again, you lose a lot of quality trying to bring it over into Blender because essentially this is just a PLY file with geometry nodes and trying to recreate that look. Now, if you want, you can check off as point cloud. It'll turn this into actual geometry. Don't do that. It'll just make your computer explode. But there are a lot of cool benefits of doing everything just within Blender, which I'm going to talk about. And then we'll talk about how to take that drone FPV footage and send it anywhere else. So if you don't like how this looks in Blender, you can just use this as a reference to fly your drone around. You can send the drone camera back into here and you can render it straight from PostShot. So first off, benefits of doing things within Blender. Well, first of all, you can control your textures from the shader editor. So if we select the Gaussian splat material, we come over to the principal BSDF. Instead of placing the color into the emission, we can place the color just into the normal base color and then set the emission to zero. And now you'll see our textures are still there. It's a little bit dark. We just need a light. So we'll go to light, we'll add a sun. And we'll bump up the power for that sun. And now you can see you can add a custom lighting. So if I want, I can also add a point light and we'll just make this like super easy to see. So if you want to customize the splats in any way, you can do it with that. Now let's try and make things look a little bit prettier. We're going to use the new real time compositing within Blender just to add some EV um, glare. And I recommend you do all of the viewport work in EV just because it's easier to move around with these dense scenes. If you do want to render, this will still work in cycles as well. You can switch to that for your rendering purposes and you can experiment with the different results. But either way, you just want to click this little check mark in the top right of the viewport and change the compositor to always and then switch over to compositing. We'll check on use nodes and you just want to search for a glare node and then set that to bloom. And you can see what that looks like by dragging in a 3D viewport and exact same thing. Change that to always. And now you can mess around with the threshold. 
Let's also add in an environment here. So I'll just click on color. We'll go for a sky texture and I'll change around some of the settings for this. So there's the basics of getting your Gaussian splat within Blender. Let's combine everything. We're gonna add in our FPV drone so we can fly through this, and then I'll show you how to export the camera animation. All right, so for setting up the free Blender FPV drone plugin, I recommend you just watch my full guide. I'll show you, I'll walk you through the installation. Um, I show you how to change settings in the geometry nodes as well. It's only a nine minute video, so if you don't wanna run into any trouble, just go watch this first. This is run from this free plugin right here. Awesome plugin. Plugin. If you want to do this with a PlayStation controller, there's also this six euro paid version, which has a lot more features and support. Super awesome stuff. Link to this will be down below so you can get up and running with the drone plugin. So just like before, we open up our drone camera. We'll add the setup. Let's go into the camera view. And whenever I do this, I like to click on this camera uh, green thing right here. Go to viewport display and just put up the pass part out just so I can actually see exactly what the camera is seeing. Let's connect our controller. We'll turn on our uh, controller view for you. I'm still pretty bad at this, but I mean, if you guys really practice, I mean, you can create some really cool, like zooming through specific things, doing a lot of the craziness that you see a lot of these drone FPV guys do. But either way, let me show you how we can export our camera animation. So again, we can bring this back into the Gaussian Splat software. We can bring this into any software you want once you have the camera data. And I'm saying camera data because right now everything is run from a simulation. You see this purple line right here. So step number one, you do what you normally do. You just create your animation. Once you're finished making your animation, you right click right here. And you can see this is safe for us. Now let's actually convert this into camera data. So I'm going to just create a, another viewport right here and we'll get off camera view. So again, here is what essentially we're doing. You see this little triangle is what's being run by the geometry nodes and the camera itself is just parented to the front of that. So if you select the actual camera object right here, you see there's nothing really going on with it. So if I was just to click file export, nothing would really be happening. So we can use some constraints just to get the location and rotation data for the camera. So I'm going to start with an empty just so we don't mess anything up. So I'll click shift A and I'm gonna add in an empty plane axis. And we'll start this at the beginning here. With this empty selected, I'm just going to control click the camera itself and then I'll click shift S and then selection active just so it's at the exact same position. Now with the empty selected again, we're going to come over here to the constraints and we're going to add a copy location and a copy rotation and we're going to select the FPV camera as our source for that. So now this empty is also going to be flying around. And if you ever run into the like, issues where you're not seeing your animation, that's just because sometimes simulations are caching weird. Once we go through the steps, you'll see everything go back to normal. So don't worry about that. Either way, once you have those parented together, you want to select your empty, go up to this object tab in the top left, go down to animation, and then select bake action. And now you want to check on visual keying and clear constraints, and then click OK. So that now created all of these keyframes for the empty. And as you can see, now we actually have that original FPV drone on there. It's just not updated yet with that. Again, just a little error that sometimes happens. So we have the empty with our correct animation. Let's actually add it to the camera just so we can straight up add the animated camera straight back into different softwares. All right, so I just hid everything so it's easier to see. Once you have that empty with your keyframes, you can just add another camera, which we're going to export. So Shift A add in a camera. I'll name this export to polycam. And then we're going to do again, the exact same steps we just did with the empty. We're going to select the camera, go over on the right to the constraints, add a copy location, add a copy rotation. And for the target, select the empty, which has the keyframes. At this point, this would be your original camera, the one that's parented to your drone. If you want, you can hide this. I'm just going to delete it because this is just an example. As you can see, we still have all of our drone movements. One last step, we need to turn this into keyframes. So again, object, animation, bake action, visual keying, clear constraints, click OK. And now we have it as keyframes. So now we don't even need the empty. We have our animated camera. The drone should not matter. The geometry no drone. If we were to turn the Gaussian splat back on and just go to camera view, again, this is all being driven from the keyframes. It should be the same movement that we created before. So that's how we can convert that simulation data straight into keyframes. And then again, the benefit of this is we can just select the FPV camera, file, export, Alembic, 
check on selection only for this export and I'll name this FPV tutorial camera export and export it as Alembic. Let's go back into our Gaussian splatting software right here and we'll just open up the one that we made earlier. I can just take the actual file right here, search for it. Here it is tutorial ABC, just drag this in, adds our camera right there and you can just select FPV camera. And there you go. You now have the drone footage straight into here. So if you like the quality of this Gaussian splat better, you still want to use your FPV drones. That's how you can do it. And you can just come over here to output and just straight up export it straight from this software. Now, last thing I'll mention in Blender before we move into the Unreal Engine workflow, if you guys do want to mix in some geometry node effects, well, pretty self-explanatory, just switch over to the geometry node system for the splat. And just to show you an example here, I'm gonna add in a few basic nodes and then a noise texture. I'll keyframe the noise texture and boom, there you go. We have this little particle animation. So yeah, just a little example. There's a lot of fun things you can do to experiment with this in Blender as a whole. So that's that. Let's now port this drone camera and the Gaussian splat over to Unreal Engine where you can get a lot better quality from the splat than in Blender. And again, all this is using free plugins. All right, so to get up and running with Unreal Engine, first off, you want to go to the Epic Games Launcher and go to the Unreal Engine store. I'm using 5.2 for this. You want to go and search for the Luma AI plugin. This is free. This is the one that worked for me. There's a couple other paid ones. I haven't tested with them, but either way, go ahead and install that to your version of Unreal Engine. Now we can fire up the software. Again, go up to edit plugins, search for Luma AI, make sure that's checked on and restart. Once you've done that, you can now easily just import your PLY Gaussian splat file straight into the content browser. So the plugin is going to give you a couple of versions here. You're gonna have the baked version, which is essentially the lighting just baked in. You're going to also have a dynamic version. So if you want, you can use Unreal Engine's lighting to create custom light setups. Another useful little setting here is all of these crop boxes. The default crop box should be the very first one here. You can just place this square over what part of the splat you want and it'll remove the rest. So now that you have your Gaussian splat within Unreal Engine, let's show you how we can bring in our FPV camera animations from Blender. So we'll hop back into Blender and this is the exact same process as bringing it into post shot, except but this time we're going to want to export the camera as an FBX. So again, make sure you do that copy location and copy rotation constraint trick so that you can convert the simulation into keyframes for the camera. I'll leave a timestamp below if you need to rewatch that part. Once you have your camera FBX exported, let's go back over to Unreal Engine and we're going to set up our camera here. So first off, we want to click to add a cinema camera actor and then we can switch over to the sequencer. We can click this plus sign to add our camera actor to the sequencer. And from here, we can now import our FBX from Blender. So go ahead and right click on your camera in the sequencer and you want to select import and then navigate to wherever you save that FBX animation. Make sure you do it that way. You can't just drag in the FBX. You need to make sure you set it up via the camera in Unreal. So now you have your FPV animation straight in Unreal Engine. You can do anything else Unreal has to offer. I've seen some amazing things with particle effects. You can use the graph editor if you want to change your animation on the fly straight from Unreal. I haven't tested much. I haven't tested much else with the Luma plugin. I don't really know what the capabilities are. I do know there are a couple other Gaussian Splat paid plugins on the market. So just something to keep in mind if you're trying something out, it's not working. You may need to just experiment with a different plugin or just tweak things a little bit more. To finish this off, I'm just going to add a post-process volume here, which will allow you to do things like add in a lens flare. Uh, you can add bloom and even some chromatic aberration. And now you can finally render this out. So you're going to want to enable the cinema render plugin. It should be included with Unreal Engine, I'm pretty sure. Once that's on, you can click this button here in the sequencer to open that up and adjust your settings and then finally render out your animation. So yeah, exciting times. I expect a lot more game changing things to come out regarding 3D scans this year. Hopefully this guide will help you get up and running and allow you to explore some awesome stuff with 3D guys and splats like the video if you enjoyed for the youtube algorithm subscribe for more content like this and i'll see you guys in the next one